Okay, good evening, everybody. My name is Patrick Alexander. I'm with the Charlotte Street Foundation. And I apologize for any delays. Thank you. We had some technical difficulties. But if you're in the Zoom, you are at Peer, which is our Charlotte Street's uh, program that we do online. We started this out uh, last year during COVID lockdown. And the idea of Peer is that we're connecting artists in the metro area who might not necessarily know each other, but are working in some similar fashions, might be a common thread in their work. And so by that, um, working with emerging artists and established in a mid-career. So we're thrilled to have these three artists we curated and pulled them up. So tonight we have Ann Dean, who's based in Lawrence, Kansas. Thank you. And then we have Lauren Whitaker from Kansas City and Sean Dunn, who's from Kansas City as well. All amazing photographers. And I'm not going to give a bunch of intros because that's what their slideshows are. So they've recorded these slideshows with a narration that we're going to broadcast each one of these. There are only five minutes. They had 10 slides and um, they're going to go through those real quick. And then afterwards, we'll have a little Q&A between the three of them just to talk casually. So we'll get started. And with that, let's go with Ann Dean. And my uh, colleague, Hope, is the one running all this. Thank you, Hope. There we go. Hi, I'm Ann Dean. I'm a photographer from St. Louis. I live in Lawrence, Kansas. I became interested in photography at a young age, and I was fascinated by the power of the still image, the idea of capturing a moment in time and telling a story, recording flashes of life, fractions of seconds, fleeting moments that give our lives meaning. I also wanted to travel and see the world and how others lived. And when I started out, I was still shooting on film, which has a quality all its own. This image on film is from Havana, Cuba in 2002 called Afternoon Game. I love it because nobody seems to notice me even though I have a camera pointed right at them. I'm like a fly on the wall silently observing, documenting, and telling their story in that moment. I moved to Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula for a few years and continued my journey of travel photography and photo essay. And while I was there, I did a series called Mexico Color Line and Texture, where the idea was to show people in their culture through what exists around them, how they live and what they see on a daily basis to leave the viewer with a sense of wanting to know more. Another image from that series that shows the detail of a wall where work and improvements were being made to the building, raw, abstract, easy to pass by without a thought, but so much color, so much texture and vibrance and life here. I'm interested in telling the stories of the underrepresented, the disenfranchised, and the marginalized people in our community and beyond. One of my favorite things about living in Lawrence is the existence of Haskell Indian Nations University, which is a leader in indigenous education and a source of pride for the native people who have studied and worked there. It's also the most tribally diverse place in North America at any given time. Each fall they have their Welcome Back powwow celebration, which is open to the community. And we're lucky to have this rich heritage to learn about and to share in that is so close by. I also teach digital and film photography courses at the Lawrence Art Center to both youth and adult students. And I'm a freelance photographer. Uh, that work ranges from portraits and weddings to many different types of events around the community. This is a shot from the Free State Festival in 2016 where Public Enemy played a free outdoor concert on the street. And I've been lucky to be able to photograph all types of different folks like Barack Obama, Steve Jobs, Mavis Staples, Rakim, George Clinton. Uh, I'm always grateful to be able to do something I truly love as my day job. I also try to make sure to balance my work and my artistic projects with things that I love to photograph and that are soothing to my soul, like the beauty of the natural world. Again, a tiny glimpse of life and what makes it so special to me. I take my cell phone everywhere because you never know when you will come across the perfect photograph. In 2017, I went back to revisit Cuba again. It's really a place that's like no other. It's stuck in time with a culture that is extremely rich in the arts and music. 
and a people who do without so much, yet are so very generous and have a warmth of spirit that is ever present and unlike anything I've ever experienced. Uh, I felt connected to them somehow. I wanted to take a deeper look into the neighborhoods, the daily lives of these hardworking and enduring individuals to see how the country is changing from the old guard comrades that you see here to the youth of today walking the Malecon, experiencing a small taste of freedom for the first time. Uh, I found out shortly after this visit that I have Caribbean roots, which made me start to understand my strong feelings and my connection towards this place. So while I was there, I decided as I visited the neighborhoods um, and walked the city to embark on a new photo essay project telling the stories of these individuals from the perspective of their homes and what might lie beyond um, where they lived. Such a very personal part of our lives that perhaps becomes overlooked uh, yet it's where life happens. It's where ideas are sown. It's where children are raised. It's where shelter is had. Uh, so the project became my latest showing called Havana by Number. This past fall, I offered a new adult class at the Arts Center, going back to my photo essay roots called Documenting Our Invisible History, where we toured Eastern and downtown Lawrence searching for hidden histories capturing images and telling their stories. Um, we ended the class with a photo essay presentation. And the photos here are of the Kansas River Bridge, where in 1882, a mob of angry white men forced their way into the Douglas County Jail, dragged three men out of their cells and lynched them. No trial, no due process. These people acted as judge and jury. So on the left, you see the bridge in the evening with the top of the last remaining pillar of the original bridge in the bottom of the frame. On the right, a photograph taken at the soil recognition ceremony in October, which is part of a campaign across the country to recognize the victims of lynchings by collecting soils from the sites and creating a memorial in Montgomery, Alabama that acknowledges the horrors of racial injustice. No, thank you so much, Anne. We're going to go on to the next presentation. A while back, I had read Cameron Lucida by Roland Barnes and became interested in his theories on photography. Barnes describes the medium as being parallel to death, subject matter that show moments that are wanting to be alive, subjects stuck in a purgatory state. Some of my earlier work, I played with this notion, an image that is a moment that becomes stuck between life and death, just like these dioramic constructions of taxidermy. For this body of work, I was photographing and pairing images of animals that were dead and animals that were alive, attempting to blur the lines between the living and the dead. This project led me to start working with Family Archive pretty exclusively. As someone who has lost a family member, my sister at a young age, I began to see the power the medium of photography has in accessing and altering memories, specifically of loved ones who have passed. I began painting over my sister and old family photographs to represent the person who is now missing by placing a white sheet over her. I finished each of these images and frames my mother had gifted me from our family home. As I continued with this project, I couldn't help myself but paint sheet ghosts over more members of my family. Although I was attempting to represent the specificity of one person who becomes lost in the nuclear family, I became aware that regardless of death, each of these photographs represented moments that were eternally gone. The project culminated in a salon wall of these images hung over a mantle, acting as a memorial site that one may find in their own family home. After this project felt completed, I started to make imagery based on my own personal experience with coping with loss. I began photographing myself living alone in my 250 square foot studio apartment. I made a slideshow on an old slide projector that was paired with music. I drove my car around Kansas City and played four different versions of artists singing in the suite by and by and recorded this by taping a microphone to the passenger seat of the car, the place where company usually sits. 
I had some conversations with my mother about how losing a child could have meant either one of us to her. So I began making work around this idea. I began experimenting more with my slide projector and set up a small space in my studio apartment to take self portraits. I'd gone back to my mother's house and took pictures of her space and began sitting for the camera with a white sheet draped over my body and the images of my mother's house projected onto the fabric. This became a step in connecting myself and my sister through my mother's world. Continuing with the symbol of the white sheet, I discovered more ways to interact with my mother's space. In these images, I was still thinking about the interchangeability between my sister and I and how that resonates with my mother while she continues to live in our family home. As the ghost floats around my mother's home, it reflects light from the projector and catches an abstracted image from the room the ghost is in, leaving a shadowy figure behind it. The ghost is always attached to its shadow, how I feel my sister will always be attached to me. I'm gonna be very honest in saying that the pandemic felt like a major fissure in my practice. I'd also like to note I feel very fortunate to have the means and the space to have that type of crisis. For years, I had been dealing with family archives and the past, and as the pandemic bore on, I was beginning to have trouble reconciling the meaning behind my work since it connected to a world I felt I had lost. I feel that it's hard to go back to old memories, especially after experiencing a globally traumatic event, which made this work hard to continue. I luckily stumbled upon some information that became very formative to my current body of work. The article had to do with studies that recently were being done in regards to the brain, particularly the neural link between memories and imagining the past and one's ability to picture the future. This research has shown that the same part of the brain that creates memories, however faulty, is also the same part that allows us to create visions of our futures and that these two faculties work in tandem and cannot function without the other. Currently, my work is revolving around this connection. I'm in the very early stages, but I'm aiming to create what I'm calling future photographs. I've been finding images from years ago that resonate with me, not only as a memory, but also a future desire. I'm using my projector to show the past image and playing with paint and light to emphasize the part of the past image that I wanna make into the future thought. This image was taken on my last Christmas I was able to spend with my family. My mother was in the kitchen making twice baked potatoes an act that I always enjoy witnessing her doing and most likely will again in the future. This is in the very early stages and maybe an act of trying to reconcile what once was, but I will continue to play with this process, looking to make more future photographs. My images are functioning like my past work, but something I'm moving towards in this project is trying to manage a difference between a photograph, which is the act of preserving the past into something that contains a sense of future. Maybe it's already inherent, but I'm excited to be experimenting with these ideas. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. We're going to move on to the last one. My name is Chung Dong, and I love photographing people. Growing up, I was a stereotypical Asian kid that was good at math and science, but my favorite high school class was photography. I wanted a major in photojournalism in college, but my parents urged me to pursue a more profitable career in medicine mm -hmm. instead. All the medical schools rejected me, so after returning to Kansas City, I went back to what I really wanted to do by assisting other photographers. My early influences were photojournalists and street photographers like Elliot Erwitt, Avedon, Mary Ellen Mark, and Sam Abel. At first, I was afraid to approach strangers, so I tried to be stealthy by shooting from the hip. For me, it's a very hit and miss technique. In this photo, I had no time to frame or compose. I was snapping blindly as I was stepping off of the streetcar. Even though there was eye contact, they were completely unaware that I was taking their picture. I got really lucky capturing all their faces in this one. It took some time for me to get really comfortable with approaching strangers. I figured out how to communicate what I wanted with just a glance. Here, I was at the staging area for a Cinco de Mayo parade in Kansas City, Kansas. Without saying a word, I gave them a look and the two guys at the front posed for me. I like how they contrast with the sleepy kid in the back rubbing his eyes. I think the combination of posed and unposed adds to the mystery in this amusing scene. Last week, on my way to a meeting, I ran into these three guys sitting on their cars, drinking and singing songs in Spanish. I asked Pablo, the guy on the right, what this song was about. It's rock, 
Music is the same everywhere. Only the language and the words are different. It's a love song. Oh, heartbreak? Yeah, it's about the ladies. It's always about the ladies. And we all started laughing. He dug a modelo from his cooler and insisted that I join him. Pablo's statement about music encapsulates what I found when sorting through my catalog of images, that people are the same everywhere. We experience the same fears, the same desires, the same heartbreaks, and the same joys. I once read a study that when people learned about the differences of other cultures in their area, they actually stuck to themselves and stayed away from those neighbors. I strongly believe that we can come together by learning what we share in common with others, by seeing how we are alike. People often ask how I approach my subjects. If I have time, I sit down and talk to them and learn something about them first. I told one woman at the rodeo in Calhoun that my dad used to work at a factory in the town nearby. It turned out that she also worked there. We ended up having a nice conversation. That made it really easy to meet others in her small town. Relating to strangers makes them a little less wary of me and allows me to capture moments with their guard down. One of my favorite photographers of all time is Elliot Irwin. I love his sense of humor and his affinity for dogs. This pairing of photos is part of my Tough Guys Tiny Dog series. Nothing softens a guy up like a puppy no matter where they're from. Dogs make it really easy for me to approach people that I might have been hesitant to photograph. I don't think the guy on the left noticed me at all because he was way into loving his dog. And for the two on the right, I simply smiled, held at my camera, and they did the rest. Every little kid wants to be a cowboy or cowgirl. You expect to see cowgirls in small town Missouri. You're a little bit more surprised to see a cowgirl 9,000 miles away in small town Vietnam. Sometimes people ask me how I find my subjects. I enjoy getting off the highway and driving through the back roads. And that's how I discovered the Windsor September Fest that I've returned to photograph over the years. In the summer of 2020, I saw an Evite for a silent march downtown. I honestly did not think there would be more than a few dozen people there. I was completely taken by the sight of thousands of marchers walking silently in single file through downtown Kansas City. I had been following coverage of the Black Lives Matter movement and did not like how the only pictures that made the front page were those of violence. With this photograph, I wanted to tell a different side of the story. What I love about photography is that I'm always discovering new scenes and making new friends. This photograph is from a project I've been working on documenting a roller skating community that I ran across one day while walking around the park. Meeting new people never gets old. I hope you make it to this year's Current Works exhibit at the Leedy Arts Center through the end of January. There's some amazing work this year. Thank you for listening to my presentation and I hope to see you someday. Wow, thank you all so much. Those are great presentations. And um, I know it can be a little challenging uh, creating these and the different sort of things. You're, you're more comfortable probably uh, in the dark room than uh, putting together PowerPoints. So I appreciate that. And I thought it was great insight to see how you're all approaching your subject matters. Um, I would love for you all to maybe kind of, if you had a question for the other one, because I want you all to get to know each other. I know most of you. Um, but I can kick it off a little bit. Um, maybe um, I'm curious about how you, um, when you're approaching like the power of the camera, like of holding the camera and when you're out doing street photography or approaching these strangers, um, is that, is the camera a way to access that all the time or is that, a, is that also scare people off, I guess is it may be, um, Maybe Joan, you could you could answer that first, and then we could start question and answers in between the three of you. Um, I sometimes I think when people see me with the camera, they just think I'm like an Asian tourist or whatever, and like they I don't scare them off, and it's but it it is like a nice like uh, icebreaker because it just makes it at least for me it makes it more comfortable to talk to somebody that I don't know at all. Yeah. So are you sub then the subject of these people who take the pictures of people taking pictures at national monuments? 
Um, could you repeat? Repeat that oh, again. I was saying, you know, there, there's kind of a trend of photographers who shoot photographs of tourists taking pictures of monuments and whatnot. I was just curious if you've ever been caught as the as the subject matter in that sort of scenario. I, I, I really have no idea, but a lot of people will take a picture of me just just for the heck of it. But yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Did you have any questions for Anne or Lauren? Or comments? Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm totally fascinated by both of your stories and approaches. Um, and my question for you is um, when you travel to Cuba and Mexico, um, I, I remember reading or hearing that you say that you're stuck between two worlds sometimes. And how do you feel when you're traveling? Are you more comfortable? Yes, the, thanks for your question. Um, some, for some reason, yes, I feel more comfortable photographing people when I travel. Um, and a funny thing that someone asked me or mentioned once at a show was, if, when you see these people, you take these pictures, you're so interested in them. And then you show them and maybe someone buys one. and wouldn't it be interesting if people from other countries had these pictures of you on their wall? <laughs> uh, and what you're saying, Chuan, with, uh, you know, about becoming comfortable with people and fascinated with people, they're just as fascinated with us, you know? Uh, but for some reason, I'm more comfortable outside of my country, uh, so. Thanks, Anne. Um, with that, I was curious about uh, that project that you were doing in Lawrence with the 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 dirt and all of that. It's a powerful, powerful imagery there. Um, how how did you get drawn into that? I guess is that just from location of being in Lawrence, or is there more involvement than that? Or um, definitely location of being in Lawrence. Also, just fascination of history of people's stories. That's why I became a photographer in the first place to tell these stories of uh, people that wouldn't have their story being told otherwise. Um, and it just so happened that there was a show at the Lawrence Art Center about uh, the segregationist sites around the country. And they said, can you do a class about this, incorporating this somehow? So I've lived here long enough that I know a lot about some of these stories and I learned a heck of a lot uh, researching and covering all of this. Um, so th there's so much to see in all of our communities that's hidden, uncovered, uh, important. Yeah. Uh, with that, Lauren, I was thinking about you digging into your family's history and, and talking to your mother and all that. I mean, what a powerful subject. Um, have things been revealed to you that been in those conversations? And has that affected any of these, uh, the ghost pictures or photographs or any of that? I'd just be curious. Um, do you mean like, and revealed to me in like yeah. the work I'm doing now or? Yeah, with the, with the ghost imagery and, and whatnot and how it's progressed. It just, as you're talking and doing the research and hearing and learning more about your sister and, and things. Yeah, I feel like it's mostly has probably become a way for me to think more about like the medium of photography in its like itself. Like I know I've used like my family as like this catalyst um, for like the subject matter, but um, I feel for me like it's definitely become more about like you know, uh, maybe like what I said in the beginning of like the Roland Barthes-esque type of idea around the medium. So I think it's just more become about that for, for me, for sure. Yeah, I love what you're doing with the slide projections and just going to that next uh, platform that you could do with that. Uh, did you have any questions or comments did you want to share with the others or? Yeah, I'm curious where, um, how tough guys and tiny pumpies came about. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I have a whole bunch of these pictures where it's just like some guy with a tiny dog, and it's just it just cracks me up the first few times I've seen. I think one of the first ones was just some big muscular guy with this. He's holding this tiny little chihuahua, and just looked like it just looks so tender. And and then the I don't know how the title came about, but it kind of stuck. You both have really beautiful work uh, and I love seeing other photographers do their thing um, because we're all so different. And Lauren, I just wanna say that uh, embracing death in our culture isn't always the easiest thing to do and talk about. So it really struck me that you were able to uh, 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 embrace this topic in such an interesting way to make people feel perhaps more comfortable with it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Lauren, I uh, watched this video the other day and it reminded me of uh, what you've been doing with your juxtaposition between past and future and just combining different elements together. And it was about um, reality, the nature of reality and like talk about like you know when you play a couple notes on the piano you play them together you can discern the two notes the original notes but like with color when you combine like red and green it comes yellow but you can't tell that it came from yellow or you can't tell that it came from green or red and so it like when you're I saw your work that's what it reminded me of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chuang uh I'm fascinated by portrait photographers um, and a lot of my work has gone away from portraiture uh, because in a lot of my classes, uh, a lot has come up about people's rights and wanting their picture taken and you're taking a picture. So you take, uh, and, and so a lot of what you said was about approaching them, getting to know them. I just want to know uh, where your fascination comes from um, and how that's that has built on itself over the years. Um, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm an introvert, but like, I don't have any problems approaching people and talking to them and just learning something about them. I mean, it's, I think it's genuine curiosity. Is where most of it comes from. And what made you pick up the camera to do it? Um, I think the camera, like, it's just, just kind of an icebreaker, just an easy way for, it's like an excuse for me to talk to somebody sometimes. But, um, I just uh, think that, uh, I don't know, it just kind of serves two purposes. <laughs> Sometimes I just think somebody looks cool and I just want to get their picture, but like, it's also a great way to just to meet people and learn something about them. I, I, I'm really usually genuine about like complimenting people and starting conversations and wanting to get to know them. <clears throat> We're getting really close to our 30 minutes. I told you this goes super fast. And again, like I want everyone uh, viewing, just make sure, you know, you can go check out all of their websites and the links and whatnot. Uh, Lauren, did you have any other things uh, you'd like to ask or throw? Anybody have one last one, I guess. Um, I guess I could ask Anne. I did notice um, you had like so much diversity in your um, work like just so much. Um, and I know you were talking about returning to Cuba. Um, is there other parts of your work or any other subject matter you feel like you return to as much or as strongly? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I want to search more, more Caribbean nations, like the Virgin Islands specifically, but I wanna go back to Cuba. Uh, only because it is the most unique. I've never 
see anything like that. And it's so close to our shores. And I would encourage anybody to visit them because it's a way of seeing the world that perhaps we in the United States don't consider. Um, you know, I'd love to go to Africa. I'd love to go to South America and travel and tour those areas to Asia, to, to all over the world. Um, but Cuba has this hold on me because it's so unique, it's so special. D don't let them scare you into thinking you can't go. It's <laughs> go and see. Awesome. Well, I thank you three, Andine, Lauren Whitaker, Hyung Dong. You're all doing great work and um, keep it up. We want to uh, see that work out in the galleries and, and online. Um, I assume you probably all have Instagrams too. So uh, I'm sure there's some great sh photos being posted on there as well. Maybe a whole nother body of work. I don't know. So uh, I encourage everyone to uh, like you said, uh, check out their websites and whatnot. Um, and have a great night, everybody. And we will see you all next month. Good night. Thanks for having us tonight. Thank you. Dave Bennett, love you, man. <laughs>